Hi and welcome back to Blossom Themes YouTube channel. In this video, I will show you how you can create your first and free service, business or coaching site with one of our free themes, CoachPress Lite. The theme is absolutely free, no strings attached, even if you are a complete beginner, you can follow the step-by-step -step process shown in the video. It is very simple and easy to understand. And the best part is, if there are steps that are not working for you or you have other issues, apart from the option that you can leave them down in the comment section below, which I will definitely answer, you can also directly contact our support team. We are known for our best support team. They are very responsive. I will leave a link in the description box through which you can create a ticket and reach out to our support team. So let's get started. I will start by giving you a brief tour of our demo page so that you do have idea about what you are getting with our theme. I also have added timestamps in the video so feel free to skip to the portion that you want to. So CoachPress Lite is a lead generating theme. It is our latest release. We also have other coaching themes that you can check out on our website. We also have tutorials for all of them. I will leave a link to those themes in the description box below so that you can have access to our website and to our coach press theme and other themes. We will start with the header section right over here. So you get to add your phone number, your email address, and also integrate various social media pages to the top bar of your website. Also, you get to add a site logo. If you have already created one, you can upload it, you can control its size. And if you do not have a site logo yet, you can also display the site title and tagline. Next, you get to add the navigation menu and CoachPress Lite theme allows navigation menu in three different areas, the primary, the secondary and the footer area and you also get a back to top button such as this one so that your users or you yourself can directly jump to the top from any portion of your website. A beautiful banner section and banner sections are very crucial because they play a very important role in lead generation and boosting conversions. So with that in mind, CoachPress Lite theme comes with three different banner options. First, you get to have a banner with call to action. You get to have a banner with a newsletter and you also get to display your banner as a slider so that you can display the posts, pages and images that you want on your banner slider. And how you can do that is all included in the video. Come down, you also get to feature a newsletter section right underneath your banner section. And this is very important for email marketing. Again, a very significant way to generate leads and this is the featured area section also known as the promotional section so from here you get to add as many featured boxes as you want and you can link important pages where you want the traffic to be drawn towards so you can either link your inner service pages or you can link your instagram pages from here so you get to tell your visitors and users about yourself about your coaching brand you get to add an image some text, a message of your choice, and also a call to action button. Next, you get to display or outline the services that you provide to your clients. So testimonials are a very important ways through which you can build your brand credibility. And CoachPress Lite theme has a testimonial section where you can display your client's image, their name, their designation, and also the company that they work for and their recommendation for your brand in their own words. And you also get to add a video such as this one. Next is the client logo section. So again, this is another way through which you can build your brand credibility. You can feature the logos of all the clients that you have previously worked with. Next is the call to action section. So you can easily add some catchy lines and urge your visitors to take action through the call to action section. So you can either ask your visitors to check out your prices. You can ask them to sign up for a consultation and so on. The blog section is a very powerful promotional tool for coaches because not only it helps you to share valuable tips with your visitors, but you can also share your own experiences, your own stories with them, and you can use the blog section for that. 
and this is the Instagram section. You can easily integrate your Instagram page to your website. And this is quite fascinating because if your visitors click on one of the posts, they will be able to check out your Instagram page pretty much from the website itself. And if they click on Flourish on Instagram, it will directly take them to your Instagram page. And from here, they can check out your post. They can see your work and they can DM you. And in this way, they can directly get in touch with you. This is the footer area. So you get to add an image, your logo. You get to integrate the social media again. And you also get to edit some parts of your photo copyright text, but not all of it can be edited. The entire photo copyright can only be edited in the free theme. We'll go to the top and I will now show you some of the amazing and cool features that you get with our CoachPress Lite. The first feature is that the CoachPress Lite comes with two blog page layouts. An active blog is a great way to develop your online following and you can select the format that provides a seamless user experience. The second feature is you get a customizable banner option. So you get three customizable banner options to highlight your services in the crucial first seconds. The third feature is you get 22 highly customizable widgets. You can add them to any pages of your website. And some of the important widgets that you get are the Blossom advertisement, the Blossom author bio, like the one you saw in the demo page, the Blossom call to action, client logo widget, contact widget, and custom categories. The fourth feature is you get to choose from 900 and plus Google fonts. So you can craft the perfect website that suits your brand with these 900 and plus Google fonts. The fonts library is updated regularly to ensure you get the full benefits of choosing from different fonts. The fifth feature is custom site logo with size control. So you can upload your brand logo and you can use the size controller to adjust your logo size to fit the header easily. The sixth feature is easy to use theme settings panel with live preview. So Every changes that you make on your left hand side can be previewed in real time on the right hand side. So you can check for the errors as well as you have an idea about what your site looks like along with the changes that you make from your customizer. The seventh feature is gorgeous, responsive and mobile friendly design. So whether your visitors are using a desktop, a tablet or a mobile device, your website adapts perfectly to the screen size. Eighth is Gutenberg and Elementor compatible. So Gutenberg is an innovative new way of editing WordPress sites. You can use block units to add and arrange your website sections and add endless functionalities. CoachPress Lite also supports the Gutenberg block editor, giving you full customization powers without writing a single line of code. The ninth feature is the optimized for speed and performance. Fast loading is essential for retaining your audience and CoachPress Lite comes with speed optimization features that help give you blazing fast loading speeds. This results in a smooth user experience for your visitors. The 10th feature is search engine optimized. So search engine optimization is your lifeline to healthy traffic. The majority of websites rely on organic or search engine traffic to drive new traffic. This theme comes with an SEO optimized design to give you an edge in your SEO performance. Now I will show you how you can download, install and activate the CoachPress Lite theme. To download the CoachPress Lite theme, you'll first of all have to go to our website, blossomthemes.com. You can go to the shop section, go to free themes and go to CoachPress Lite. I have also added link in the description box below so that you can easily have access to the sales page. So all you have to do is click on download now. You have to add in your email address, your first name and your last name and then click on download now. After you have finished adding your details and after you've clicked on download now, the theme will be emailed to you in your email address in a zip format. So that is how simple it is. We don't charge you a penny for it. So let's go to the dashboard of our WordPress and I'll show you how you can install and activate it. So this is your WordPress dashboard, also known as the backend of your website. And now go to appearance, click on themes. 
click on add new and click on upload theme. You can either drag and drop the file that you received in zip format or you can simply click on choose file and then select the zip file, click on open, click on install now. So the theme has been installed successfully. Now click on activate. So the theme has been activated as it is showing on the screen. Next step would be to begin activating the plugins which are given over here and these plugins will come in handy later when you have to add certain features to your website. So click on begin activating plugins, select all. From the drop down option, click on activate and click on apply. So the plugins have been activated successfully. Now we will access our customizer. To do that, go to customize and you can click on it. I'm going to open it in the new tab. So these are your customizer settings and as I had mentioned in the features earlier, all the changes that you make on your left hand side will also be shown on the right hand side over here. So we will start creating our website and we will start with site identity. So these are the options that you get through which you get to create a unique site identity for your website. From here, you get to edit your site title. From here, you get to edit your site tagline. And from here, you can choose whether or not to display your site title and tagline. So currently, the site title is Croach Press Light. If you want something else, only coach or anything else, then you'll have to type it in this box. Similarly, you can also edit out your tagline. And it will be shown over here. If you scroll down, you can also change your site title font and your tagline font. So go ahead and select the font family from the list of available options and the changes will be shown over here. Also, depending on the font that you choose from over here, you also get to choose the style. So it can be normal, it can be semi bold, it can be bold, it can be bold 700 italic, it can be ultra bold. So you can choose as per your choice. From here, you get to select your site title font. So if you slide this button under, your site title font size will be smaller and if you slide it over, then it will appear bigger. So what you can do is you can make your site title and tagline disappear. And from here, you can select the site logo if you already have one and make it appear over here. For that, click on select site logo and you can drag and drop the file over here. Simply click on select file and select the file of your choice and all the files that you upload from over here will be stored in media library right over here. So I'm going to quickly upload all the files. Now select the logo, click on select and it will give you an option to skip cropping or crop the image from over here. I'm going to skip cropping and the logo will appear right over here. Next, you get to set the width or the pixel of your site logo so you get to control the size. If you want a smaller size, put in the smaller value over here. If you want a bigger site logo, put in a bigger value right over here. So because I want my site logo to be bigger, I'm putting in a bigger value and this is how it is going to appear. Next is you can upload your site icon which is also called Fabicon. So site icons are these tiny images that appear next to your browser tabs, bookmark bars and within the WordPress mobile apps and Fabicon or site icons are important not only for your visitors to identify your website but also for brand building. So I would highly recommend you to have one. Click on select site icon and I'm going to select the site logo image and this time I'm going to crop it out. Click on crop image. And if you can notice, this little image that is displaying over here is your site icon. Click on publish. Let's go back. The next thing that we will do is we will integrate our social media pages to our website and make them display right over here. So for that, go to general settings, go to social media settings. The first thing that you will have to do is you'll have to enable the social links. 
Now click on add new links and the process is very, very simple. All you have to do is search for your social media icon. So for example, if I want to search for Facebook, simply type in a few keywords, just type in face or Facebook and here the icon has appeared. Click on it. And what you have to do in the link box is you have to copy and paste the link to your Facebook page right over here. And after you add in the link, you can see the tiny Facebook icon appearing right over here. If you want to add an Instagram, search for Instagram, click on the icon, add in the link to your official social media page and the icon will be shown over here. And following the same process, you can add some more social media links. So this is how you can add various social media settings, which will be displayed right over here. So click on publish to save the changes. Let's go back. Next, we can configure our banner section right over here. But before that, I would like to create our very first post because the site is completely empty. So let me create our very first post. For that, you'll have to go back to your dashboard and then go to post, click on add new. I will leave a link in the description box below to a video that will give you an in-depth tutorial about how you can create your very first post using the Gutenberg editor. For now, I will only give you a brief tour. So you have to add in the title over here. You can add in the content over here. From here, you can add in the categories, you can add in tags, and you can also add in the featured image. And from here, you can choose your sidebar template. I will not go into this for now. I will come back to this section when I'm later explaining the general sidebar layout. So I'm going to add in the title and I'm going to add in the content. If you want to add in an image, then simply click on this plus icon go to image and select the one from a media library or you can upload one and here it has appeared and you can create categories from over here simply click on add new category add the category name and click on add new category or you can also click on enter now you can create as many categories as you want and you can assign those categories to your post from here you can add in the tags for your post just make sure that you separate the tags with commas or the enter key from here you can add in the featured image for your post and i would recommend you to have a featured image because if you don't it will leave a gray layout on your website which is not going to look very flattering so click on set featured image and select the image of your choice. After you have added everything else, go ahead and click on publish and the first post have been published. Let's take a look at it. So this is how your first post is looking like. Okay, everything looks good except for the permalink over here, which is looking a bit weird. So I will show you how you can change that. For that, go back to your site and go to settings, go to permalinks. So instead of the plain option from under common settings, select the post name so that your post name shows in your permalink and click on save changes. Now, if you go back to our site, and give it a refresh as you can see the permalink is now changed if your page does not refresh or if it shows a 404 error make sure that you go to one of the categories first and then click on your blog post so that the changes are shown okay so this is the first post that i created and if we go back to our dashboard go to all posts this is the only post that we have so far so i'm going to pause the video for a while and i'm going to add a few more posts and then we will continue with creating our site as you can see from the screen i have added a few more posts 
so back to our customizer and before we continue with our front page settings we'll have to first of all go to home page settings because this is the first thing that you have to take care of because this determines what your home page display will be you can choose from either latest post or a static page if you choose your latest post as your home page displays then all of the latest posts will be shown as your landing home page or a home page display as opposed to when you choose a static page you'll have a static page as your home page display and remember that you will have to choose a static page in order to configure all of your front page settings and display the sections from under the home page settings and when you have a static page as your home page display you will need a page where all of your blog posts will be displayed so that is under the blog page all of your blog posts will be displayed and the home and the blog page have been displayed in default here but if the home and the blog page weren't displayed in default you would have to click on add new page type in home click on add to create a home page and to create the blog page you would have to do the same once you click on add for both the pages your home and the post pages would have been created now remember the home and the blog page would have to be created only if the home and the blog page weren't created in default if you still have confusions about it drop the questions in the comment section below and again you can easily reach out to our support team through the link i have provided below we will choose a static page and we don't have a need for these pages we have removed it and now we will go to front page settings starting with the banner section so from under banner options we have four different banner options available the first one is to disable the banner section altogether so if you choose this your banner section will not appear at all the next option is to display a static or a video call to action banner so you can either have an image such as this one and you can display a call to action section on your banner to add the image you can click on add new image and select the one that you like i'm going to use the suggested image which is already over here from here you get to overwrite the title which will be shown over here from here you get to overwrite the subtitle And if you scroll down, you get to choose your button one label from get started to anything else. Just type in the words that you want to display over here. And over here, you have to add in your banner one link. So what you have to do is you have to add the feature link to the page or the post that you want your visitors to land on when they click on this button right over here. And it is the same with your button to label. You can override it from over here from no more to anything else that you want and over here you have to add in the featured link again to the page or the post that you want your visitors to land on you also get to enable to open your button one link in the new window and the option is also available for your button number two from here you get to choose your caption alignment from left so instead of static image you also get to add in a video so all you have to do is click on select video and you can either upload the video or select the one from the media library click on choose video and that video will be played as your banner let me quickly align the banner caption to the left so that you can have a clear picture of how your video looks like and instead of the video if you happen to own a youtube channel and if you want to feature one of the videos from your youtube channel to your banner you can also do that simply go to your youtube channel and for example if i want to feature this particular video all i have to do is i'll have to copy the link from over here and paste the link right over here I'm going to remove this video and that video will be featured as your banner slider 
So this is how you can feature a static image a header video or a YouTube URL as your banner slider. I'm going to remove it and put my banner caption alignment to the right. The next option is to have a static or a video newsletter banner. So from here you can feature the newsletter section on your banner. But because the newsletter has not been created yet, I'm going to skip this part for now. But as soon as I create a newsletter, then I will come back to this. So the third option or the fourth option is to display your banner as a slider. So when you select it, you have other options. If you choose the latest post as your slider content style, then all of your latest posts will be displayed in your banner slider. From here, you get to add the slider subtitle. From here, you get to change your button one label from get started to anything else. And over here, you'll have to add in the featured link, the link that you want your visitors to land on when they click on the get started button. Also, you get to change the slider read more label from over here. From here, you get to choose the number of slides you want to display. So instead of the latest post, if you choose category, then you will have one more option. If you slide down, you get to choose your slider category from the list of categories over here. So if you choose business, then all of the posts with business category assigned to it will be shown in your slider. And if you choose coaching or any other category, then the posts from that particular category will be shown or displayed in your banner slider. The rest of the options that are shown over here, which are available for both options when you choose your slider content style as the latest post or your slider content style as the category are the same. So the first is the slider auto, which enables slider auto transition without having to click on this arrow. Next is the slider loop and by enabling this option, your slider will keep moving in a loop without it getting stuck at the end of the slides. And from here, you get to enable or disable the slider caption. So if you disable this, your slider caption will be disabled as opposed to when you enable it, your slider caption will be enabled. Next is to enable the full size image in the slider. From here, you get to choose your slider animation. So feel free to choose the animation that you want if you decide to choose your banner as a slider. And from here, you get to control the speed of the slider in milliseconds. I'm going to choose the static video call to action banner just the way it was before because I like more this way you can go ahead and select your own banner slider also in the description box below i have added the recommended image sizes for your reference so go ahead and click on publish if you have made any changes we'll go back and the next is the newsletter section so before we do any configuration from over here we'll have to go back to our dashboard and create our newsletter so hover your mouse around the blossom themes email newsletter this was the plugin which we had activated at the time of installation and activation of the theme so now this will come in handy click on add new so you have to fill in the details right over here you have to add in your title you have to choose the name and email or the email field setting from over here you can add in the form note which is basically a short message asking your visitors or users to subscribe from you you can set your background color or you can set the background image of your choice i will also leave a link in the description box below to a video that will give you in-depth tutorial about how you can add a newsletter to your website so just go ahead and fill in all the details. I'm going to choose name and email. You can also change the label from over here. Select your background color from over here. If you choose to add the background image, select over here and click on upload image to upload the image of your choice. So I'm going to select the background color for this particular newsletter. Click over here, select the color from the palette over here and then you can move around the pointer and the slider to get to the color of your choice you can choose the font color from over here the process is same i'm going to select the white now click on publish go back to your customizer and now you have to click on add a widget 
So as it is written over here, search for the Blossom Themes email newsletter. So simply type in email and the widget has appeared. Click on it. Now all you have to do is from under newsletter, go ahead and select the newsletter which we have just created. Click on it and here your newsletter is showing. And if you want to upload the newsletter icon, click on upload and upload the image icon of your choice which will display over here like this. And after you are done adding the newsletter, click on done and click on publish. Now that I have added the newsletter, I will also show you how you can add the newsletter in your banner. So go back and again to the banner section. Select your banner option as a static video or a newsletter banner. Now. Over here, under the banner newsletter shortcode box, you'll have to go back to the dashboard and also you must have noticed I changed the color a little bit. So you can go ahead and change your color from here if you want to. So back to the shortcode, copy the shortcode from over here and paste it. And your newsletter will be displayed on your banner. You can choose your banner caption alignment from left to right and about the header image you can change it by clicking on add new image so if you publish this and go back to your site give it a refresh and your newsletter will appear right beside your banner section let's go back I will set it back to the static video call to action banner publish it and back next is the promotional section Okay, so to add the promotional section, again, you'll have to add in the text and the blossom image text widget. So click on add a widget and search for the text widget. Click on it. Add in the title and the description. Click on done. And next, you have to add in the blossom image text widget. Again, click on add a widget and search for image text. So here it has appeared. Click on it. And what you have to do now is click on add image text. You can also add in the title if you want to. I'm skipping it. Click on upload. Upload the image of your choice. Click on select. Add in your link text and the featured link. In the featured link, you can add the link to the pages that you want the traffic to be drawn to. So this is a great way to generate leads and also to draw traffic and boost conversions. For now, I have added a dummy link. So following the same process, you can add more featured boxes and you can add as many featured boxes as you want to. After you are finished adding all of the featured area boxes, click on apply and they will show right over here. Click on done and click on publish. Next is the about section. So before we go ahead and configure these settings here, we'll have to go back to our dashboard and create a new page. So go to pages, click on it, click on add new. So add in your title and your content, go to page and set your featured image. Now click on publish. So the page has been created. Now we will go back to our customizer and give it a refresh once so that all the changes made in the dashboard are also reflected here. Again, go to the front page, go to about section, click on add a widget and search for blossom featured widget. Click on it. So from the drop down option under page, Click on it and this is the page that we have just created for our about me section. So select this and as you can see your about section is now showing. You have the option to show the featured image which will be shown over here and you can also choose to show your full page content if your about page content is really long. You can align your image from right to left. And you can also show read more button by clicking this option and you also have the option to let your users open the read more button in the same tab. From here, you can choose the signature for your about section which will be displayed over the image. So click on select image and select your signature. Click on choose image. 
and your signature will be displayed over the image. Click on done and publish. Next is the service section. You'll have to click on add a widget and as it is written over here, search for blossom icon text. So I'm going to simply type in icon text and search for the widget. Here it has appeared. Click on it. Okay, so you have to add in the title and the description. You have to upload the image or you can upload the icon from over here. So let's add in the title and description first. Click on upload image and select the image of your choice which will be displayed over here and you can add in the read more label from over here. So simply type in read more or just about anything else that you want and the read more label will only be shown once you add the read more link. So again, you have to add in the link to the page or the post that you want your visitors to land on when they click this read more label right over here. And now it is showing. So following the same process, I'm going to add two more service sections. After you are done adding all of your services, go ahead and click on done. So from the options that are given above, simply type in whatever you want over here and it will override the title that is given over here. Similarly, you can override the service section title by typing in this box over here, which will override the title over here. And it is the same with the service section content. Click on publish to save the changes. The next is the testimonial section. So to add the testimonial section, you'll have to add the Blossom testimonial widget. So click on add a widget and search for testimonial. It has appeared. Click on it. Okay, so it is very simple. All you have to do is add in the name of your client, the designation, their testimonial. And you have to upload the image of your client by clicking on upload over here. Click on upload image and upload the image of your client now. And it is showing over here. And you can keep on adding your testimonials by your clients by following the same process. After you are finished adding all of your testimonials, it will be displayed like this. So click on done. And you can also add YouTube embed code to display the video. You simply have to add in the code over here and the video will be embedded right over here. All you have to do is add a YouTube embed code to display the video. And after you add a YouTube embed code like this, like you are seeing on the screen, your video will be displayed over here. Click on publish and the rest of the options that are on the top are you can edit out your section subtitle, section title and your testimonial section content from over here. Whatever you type in will override the information over here. Next is the client section. So click on add a widget and search for client logo widget. So let's search for it. Click on it and add in the title from over here. Now click on add another logo. Click on upload image, upload your client logo image and over here you can add the feature link which will link to this client image. Again, if your visitors click on this client image, then they will be landing on this link page that you add. In a similar way, I will keep on adding more client logo images. After you have finished adding all of your client logos, Click on apply and it will be shown over here in a carousel slider. You have two more options to display your logo in black and white and also to open them in the same tab. After you are done, click on done and publish. Next is the call to action section. So again, click on add a widget and search for blossom call to action widget. Just type in call to action and click on the widget after it has appeared. 
So you have to fill in the details. You have to add in the title, the description, the number of call to action buttons. You have to add in the button one label. And if you choose two call to action buttons, you will have the option to add the button to label as well as the button to link. From here, you get to choose your button alignment. You can select the background color from here and upload the image to your call to action section from over here. Let me finish adding all of the details over here. Remember that your button one label only shows when you have added the button one link and it is the same for button two if you have chosen two call to action buttons. Now it is showing. I have skipped the description part but you can add it if you want to. Click on upload image and select the image of your choice which will be displayed right over here. Click on done. Following the same process, I have added a second call to action section and like that, your second call to action section has been added. You can keep on adding more if you want to. Click on publish and the next is the block section. Enable your block section by enabling the switch or toggle, whatever you call it, from over here and your block section will be enabled. You can overwrite the block title, blog subtitle. The block description, read more label, which is showing right underneath each of your blog post and the view all label from the boxes that are showing over here. I will overwrite the block description. And click on publish. We are done with our front page settings. Now we will start with appearance settings, which we had left out after site identity. So go into it. The first is colors. We'll go to the top. From here, you can select the background color for your entire website. Again, the process is same. Select the color palette, move around your pointer and your slider to get to the color of your choice. And if you click on default, you will set your website background color back to default. Next is the background image. So you can also set an image as the background of your website. Click on select image, select the image of your choice, which will be displayed in the background like this. From under preset, you can choose various options for your image settings. From here, you can choose the image position in various directions. And from here, you can choose the image size from original to fit to screen and fill screen. You have two more options at the bottom. With this, you can either choose to repeat or not repeat the background image. And with this, you can choose whether to scroll the image with page or not. So you can easily go ahead and explore these options. I'm going to remove the background image. Next is the typography. From here, you get to choose the primary, secondary, and tertiary font and control the entire font size. This is the primary font. This is the secondary font. And these are the tertiary fonts. So it is very easy. All you have to do is from under the font family, select the font of your choice, which will show the changes in your primary font. Similarly, with the secondary font, select the font of your choice and you will see the change happening over here. Similarly, tertiary image font, you can change it from over here. And from the font size, you can either increase or decrease your entire website's font size. Okay, I'm going to quickly set it back to the way it was before. Go back. Next is the layout settings. The first one is the block page layout. From here, you get to choose your block page layout. So go to your block page first 
So currently the second layout has been chosen. You can choose the first option which is going to look like this. I will stick with the second layout and click on publish. Next is the general sidebar layout and I will start with the post sidebar layout because the concept of sidebar layout is the same for both page and the post sidebar layout. So from here you get to choose a general sidebar layout for all of your posts which means if you choose one of the sidebar layout from over here it will be applied to all of the posts that you have over here all of your blog posts. So if you open some of the blog posts randomly you will see that the right sidebar layout has been chosen for both because the default sidebar layout is to have the right sidebar layout. If you choose the one with left sidebar layout, click on publish, go back and refresh them, then all of the posts will have the left sidebar layout. Well, the cool thing is you can have a different sidebar layout for each of your posts. To do that, you'll have to go back to the dashboard and you'll have to choose the sidebar layout from the bottom. So let's just say this particular post, if I want to have a right sidebar layout for this particular post and I want the remaining post to have the left sidebar layout, then I can do that. So go back to the dashboard, go to post and open the post, click on edit. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom, so go ahead and select the right sidebar layout. You can also choose from different sidebar click on update and if you go back give it a refresh this post will have a right sidebar layout but if you go to another post give it a refresh it will still have the left sidebar layout to it following the same process you can have different sidebar layout for each of your posts just select it from the bottom over here And it is the same for your page sidebar layout. The next is the default sidebar layout. So this is the general sidebar layout for your whole site. Go back to your home page. But the default sidebar layout can only be applied when you have chosen from under home page settings, you have chosen your latest post as your home page displays. That is when you get to select your default sidebar layout. So if you go back to the layout settings from under general sidebar layout, you can choose the right sidebar layout, you can choose the left sidebar layout, you can choose no sidebar or any of the default sidebar layout options available. And we are done with our front page settings. Next is the general settings. The first option is your header settings. The first thing you have to do is if the toggle isn't enabled, you have to enable it first and from here you get to display your phone and your email address on your top bar. So fill in the details over here. From here you can choose your block background image and if you want to remove it, you can click on remove button. If you want to change the image, click on change image and select the image of your choice. Click on publish to save the changes again. We are done with the social media settings. So we will go to SEO settings. All right, let's go to our blog section for that. And the first option is to enable the last updated post date. So if you disable this option, the last updated post date will not be shown. But I would recommend you to enable the last updated post date because it also plays a very important role in your SEO optimization. Next is to enable the breadcrumb. And if you do not know what breadcrumb is, if you open one of the posts, this is what breadcrumb is. If you disable it, it will not be shown anymore. If you enable it, it will be shown. And I would recommend you to enable your breadcrumb because it improves the internal SEO of your site. From here, you get to edit your breadcrumb home text from home to coach or anything else that you want. I will revert it back. Click on publish. Next is the post blogs and pages settings. The first option is to hide the prefix in the archive page. So archive pages are your category and your tags pages. And if you open one of the category, so if you disable to hide the prefix in archive page, this will be shown. 
as opposed to any enable that prefix will not be shown next is the blog post image crop so all the images that you upload are cropped as per the predetermined dimension of the image that the theme supports when you enable this the blog post images will not be cropped and it applies in the featured image in home archive and search posts next is to enable the block excerpt so currently it is enabled if you disable this the entire post will be shown in your blog page for all of the blog post as opposed to when you enable it only the excerpt will be shown from here you get to choose your excerpt length so you can choose your excerpt in words you get to override your blog title description and read more text from the boxes over here next is the single post image crop so single post image crop is the same as the blog post image crop the only difference is that the single post image crop works with the images that you have uploaded in your single post next is to hide the author section so this is your author section and if you enable this the author section will not be shown anymore next is to show the related post these are the related post if you disable this then the recommended articles will not be shown and from here you get to override your related post section title from here you get to override your related portfolio title the rest of the options are self-explanatory so you can easily go ahead and explore them on your own if you face any problems leave those questions in the comment section below or directly reach out to our support team with the link i have provided below let's publish our changes with the newsletter setting you can add the newsletter section to your website but we have already added one so i will not go into it next is the miscellaneous settings so from here you get to choose the 404 image and the 404 image is usually shown to your users when they happen to accidentally click on links that have expired or on links to the pages that do not exist anymore and if you want to change the 404 image which is showing in default right now you can click on change image and select the image of your choice and you can also remove it and finally we get to integrate our instagram section so we'll go back to our home page again and the first thing you have to do is enable this toggle or switch again whatever you call it next is click this link and what you have to do is click on connect with instagram because i have previously connected the blossom themes instagram account with other websites it is showing message like this for you it will ask you to fill in your login credentials and click on authorize i'm going to click on allow as you can see from the screen the access token username and the rest of the options have automatically been filled so click on save changes if you want to make any changes you can go ahead and make it before you click on save changes you must have noticed that after I clicked on save changes, the connect with Instagram button did change to reconnect with Instagram, which means our configurations has happened successfully. Now let's cross this tab out. We'll scroll all the way to the bottom. And just as a way of refreshing our customizer, I will disable and enable it again. And here you can see the Instagram section has been integrated to our website and it is now showing click on publish we are done with our general settings next is the elementor settings so elementor is a page builder plugin which allows to customize the content of any pages normally a lot of themes by blossom themes cannot be edited using elementor but you can enable this option from over here and after you do this it lets you edit your home page using elementor which overrides all the sections and content of your home page so you can go ahead and enable it and use the elementor page to overwrite your home page content i'm going to disable it for now the next option is menus but before i go into it i want to show you how you can create a contact page in your website to create a contact page go back to your dashboard and from the pages click on add new add the title contact and click on publish then go back again to the contact plugin 
And this is another plugin which we had installed and activated when we installed and activated our theme. So hover your mouse around over here and click on contact forms. This is your contact form. And here is the contact form one. If you click on edit, you can add and remove the tags from over here, but we won't do that for now. What we will do is we will copy the short code and this can also be copied right from over here. Again, we'll go back to the page, to all pages and edit the contact page we have just created. Click on edit, paste the short code and click on update. So the contact page has been created. If you open the link in the new tab, you can see the contact page with the contact form embedded into it. Back to our customizer and let's go to menus. There are two ways through which you can create navigation menu in your website through a dashboard and through the customizer itself. In this video, I will show you how you can create a menu through customizer. So currently this menu is showing in default. I'm going to remove it so that I can show you from the beginning. So click on create new menu, give your menu a name. Then select your menu location. I'm going to select primary, click on next, click on add items. And now you can add items to your primary menu from under pages, from under post, categories, tags. You can also create custom link from over here. So from under pages, let's add our home page, blog page, contact page and i also want to add the about page but the title is quite long so what i'll do is i'll create a custom link for it so quickly go to your about page and copy the link click on add items again add in the url and the link text will be about click on add to menu so this is how you can create custom link. Click on publish and as you can see the primary menu has been created. Back and let's create our secondary menu. The process is same. So give your secondary menu a name. Choose the secondary location. Click on next and start adding items by clicking on add items. For this I want to add various categories. So choose in the categories or you can also choose other items from over here and click on publish. Also, you can sort and toggle your menu items like this. And whatever order you choose over here, that order will be shown over here. Let's create the navigation menu for our last navigation menu area. That is the footer menu. Select the menu location to footer. Click on next. We'll go to our home page and to the bottom. So the process again, it's same. Click on add items and then add in the items from over here and you can sort and toggle easily like this, which will be shown over here. Click on publish. So this is how you create the navigation menu. Next is the widgets. We will start with above footer. So click on add a widget and search for image widget. Click on it. Click on add image. Select the image of your choice. Click on add a widget and the image has appeared over here. You can also link this image to a particular post. Click on done. To add Blossom social links, click on add a widget and search for social links. Click on it. Overwrite the title from here and following the same process like how I showed you to add social media icons in your header section, you can go on and keep on adding your social media pages. Click on add social icon, search for your social media, click on the icon and add the link to your official social media page. After you are finished adding, click on apply and here it has appeared. Click on done and publish. To add your footer one, you have to click on add a widget and select from the list of available widgets over here. So it is completely up to your choice. You can choose anything that you want to add. So it can be Blossom Pinterest where you can display your latest pins 
just add in the Pinterest URL over here and it will be displayed over here. You can also determine the height or the pixel of your Pinterest widget in your footer area. Click on done and following the same process you can add your footer area number 2, 3 and 4. Select your footer area, click on add a widget and select from the list of available widgets which are highly customizable. Customize it as per your need. After you are done, click on done. Following the same process, add your footer area number 3 and footer area number 4. I am removing the footer areas for my website but you can go ahead choose the widget and add those widgets to your footer areas in your footer section. I will now show you how you can add your sidebar widgets. For that go to block section. As soon as I clicked on the block section you must have noticed that the option to add the sidebar has now appeared. Click on it. Let me quickly remove the default sidebar first. The first widget we'll add is the Blossom Author Bio. So search for Blossom Author Bio from the search bar. Click on it. And you have to add in the details from here. So let me fill in the details here. Starting with author name, I will leave out the title, but you can add it if you want to. I'm adding Samantha Walters just as an example. You can display the photo from either Gravatar or you can click on uploaded photo and click upload to upload the photo of your choice. Add in the description. If you have a graphic of your signature then you can click on uploaded photo and upload it from here or you can simply click on text and type out your signature over here. I'm going to upload the picture of the signature the graphic of the signature and it is appearing over here you can add in the button label and link that button to a page from here and it will show over here click on add social profile to add social medias search for your social media click on the icon and add the link to your social media page, your respective social media page over here and you can keep on adding more. Click on apply and your social media links will be shown over here. Click on done. In a similar way, you can keep on adding more widgets. You can just select from the list of available widgets here and just like how we added widgets in our footer area, you can select and add it. So you can go ahead and add in your recent post. You can do the necessary customization from here. Click on done. Similarly, you can add an Instagram widget. Just search for Instagram and click on it. Blossom themes feed for Instagram, which will show over here. And after the necessary changes are made, which you can do from the options available over here. Click on done. You can also add an email newsletter widget. Just search for email or you can also type in newsletter in the search box. Click on it. From the drop down option, select the newsletter which we created from our dashboard earlier. You can also upload newsletter icon from over here. You can add in the title from over here if you want to. So following the same process, you can go ahead and add as many widgets as you want to, whichever widget you want to. Click on publish to save the changes and this is how our sidebar widget is looking like. We are done with our widget and we have covered the home page settings in the beginning. So now we will go to footer settings. From here, you can edit out this portion of the footer copyright text. So instead of copyright 2021 coach, you can add in copyright 2021 or just about any text that you want to. 
From here, you can add the background image for the footer area over here. Click on select image and select the image and it will have a very faint but subtle display right above your footer as a background. Click on publish to save the changes. And the last one is additional CSS. So if you have your own CSS code, you can copy and paste them here to customize the appearance and layout of your site. So that was it about the additional CSS and we are also done with the customizer settings of CoachPress Lite Free Theme. Let's go back to our home page and we will go to our website and take a final look at how it has turned out. So back to our website, give it a refresh and this is how our final website is looking like. So that was it about the CoachPress Lite free theme. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comment section below and you can also easily reach out to our support team using the link that I have dropped in the description box. If you like this video, please do give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Your support means a lot to us. Also, make sure that you follow us on all of our social media pages. The links are in the description box and also in the banner of our channel homepage. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in my next video.